Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Corn Belt. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. We'll quickly start with a look at the temperatures across the region here early on this Friday morning. We've got 50s and 60s widespread for most of us across the Corn Belt. A look at the satellite with lightning activity overlaid with it. Uh, here's our cutoff low, still spinning away across the Ohio Valley, pushing off toward the Mid-Atlantic, finally beginning to scoot off to the east. We've got another disturbance right now that kicked off some severe storms across the high plains overnight. Those have continued in the form of an MCS pushing across portions of Kansas and Oklahoma this morning, uh, still producing some strong winds as they push into the Oklahoma City metro and then off into southeast Oklahoma later on this morning. We're going to have to talk about several days of potential severe weather and thunderstorms activity across the central U.S., potentially lasting into uh, the early part of next week, at least in disorganized fashion, but uh, in disorganized fashion. Uh, but we'll look at the next three days here, Friday, Saturday, and then here is Sunday. Today focused on a, uh, an enhanced risk across portions of the Red River, Oklahoma, and Texas, but a slight risk expanding all the way into portions of Kansas, Missouri, uh, and a, um, a marginal risk all the way into the Kansas City area. As we head into the day on Saturday, we'll be watching a uh, slight risk across the Dakotas into Nebraska, a risk for some isolated strong storms down the dry line into Kansas and into the Panhandles. Watching a newly emerging area here that may be under the gun across parts of the eastern Corn Belt, Illinois and Indiana, uh, does concern me Saturday afternoon and evening with the potential for some supercell thunderstorms producing uh, all severe weather hazards here, large hail, damaging winds, and maybe a few tornadoes. And then as we head into the day on Sunday, looking at a marginal risk across the midsection of the country, again, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, South Dakota, into portions of Minnesota under the gun for those strong, uh, strong storms. We can match that with our our uh, thunderstorm index here. This is something I've been working on over the last year or so, uh, helping us kind of rate the environment here, how conducive it is to severe weather or the volatility of that environment if thunderstorms do form. And again, that backs up these, uh, the uh, Storm Prediction Center risk areas quite well. Again, with that risk highest down here on Friday, this would be Saturday and Sunday. So here's our, our high plains risk for strong storms. Again, a very volatile environment across portions of Nebraska and Kansas. The question mark here, we've got a strong cap or a strong lid on the atmosphere. And so are those storms able to uh, develop and punch through that that cap during the afternoon across that environment? And then, of course, uh, I just highlighted this region here for Saturday afternoon and evening as well. And then we head into Sunday watching another uh, conducive environment here, getting those values into the 6 to 7 range, which is, again, plenty supportive of strong storms uh, on Sunday afternoon. So let's look at the high resolution NAM model and see where it's breaking out storms over the next several days. Again, we'll go ahead and bring it back to Friday morning, watching that MCS tracking across Kansas and Oklahoma. It'll continue to push off to the east and to the southeast, uh, potentially weakening later in the day. We'll have to watch this uh, as it pushes off across portions of southeast Oklahoma into Arkansas and Texas to see how long that, that wind damage threat is going to linger into the day. As we head into the afternoon, again, watching for those strong storms, potentially uh, producing some high winds, some large hail, maybe a, an isolated tornado across that region. Same thing going on just to the north across the Kansas City region, parts of Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, maybe a few strong storms overnight tonight. Now it's this wave that continues off to the east during Saturday. Uh, so these storms continue in isolated fashion through the overnight across portions of Iowa and Missouri. Uh, the warm front kind of draped across this region, so as we head into the early morning hours, maybe a few scattered storms developing from central Illinois into southern Indiana. Let's take it into Saturday afternoon, though, as we start to watch for our next round of strong storms to fire in a couple of areas, looking at the high plains here across the Dakotas down into western Nebraska, northeastern Colorado, and then our eastern Corn Belt risk here across northern Illinois, maybe far southern Wisconsin into northern Indiana uh, for those scattered strong storms to pop up Saturday afternoon and evening. And then our third risk uh, is going to be well to the south. This is where we have that cap, that strong lid on the atmosphere. Uh, so it may not be until late evening into Saturday night that we see those strong storms popping in that area. But such that by the time we get to the end of the day, there is a large zone along the dry line across the high plains and then into the Midwest that could be looking at the chance for some strong storms on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening into Saturday night. So let's take it through the overnight into Sunday morning. Again, lower confidence in the uh, exact details as we get into this range, but that's when we'll be watching for more strong storms to pop up across this region as we get into Sunday afternoon and evening. Total precipitation over the next 60 hours. This will take us to Sunday afternoon. Again, a smattering of precipitation. Uh, it looks like the most significant of which is going to be right in this zone with those strong storms over the next 24 to 36 hours. But every state across the Corn Belt 
the chance for at least scattered storms uh, in a bit of a hard predict fashion. So some folks are going to remain dry, some are to get hit with a thunderstorm and get an inch or two of precipitation across this region. And that really is the theme as we head into next week. We have a messy jet stream picture right now. So here's our cutoff low that's continuing to kind of spin down and move off to the east over the next 24 hours or so. And then we've got broad troughing uh, kind of across the, the west with these little ripples, these little kind of uh, perturbations within the flow that are helping kicking off these zones of thunderstorms. Again, here's the short wave that's responsible for that big arc of thunderstorms across Kansas and Missouri. Uh, I'm sorry, against across Kansas and Oklahoma early this morning, and that'll continue that severe weather threat into the Red River region during the uh, late evening and the overnight. Let's head through the day on Friday, taking it into Saturday. Again, here's the short wave now, this strong patch of winds uh, blasting across northern Illinois. That is what enhances that severe weather risk across this region Saturday afternoon and evening. And then off to our west, here's this trough kicking in across the high plains. That's what's responsible for the severe weather risk across this region. With a strong cap off to the south across Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas tomorrow and weaker jet stream winds, uh, that's what keeps that risk a little bit more sketchy, a little bit more isolated in nature. Let's take it just a little bit quickly into next week now. You're watching this broad troughing across this region, but it's not a real defined trough. It's not real uh, strong. You're not seeing those real, you know, the orange and the red shading uh, with the stronger jet stream winds like you do off to the north. So it's a, a trough, but it's weak, disorganized flow. We've got little perturbations. Uh, but the story is, as long as we keep this troughing kind of in the region, especially if we're doing something like this, a little cutoff low kind of sitting across the Gulf Coast, we are just pumping moisture northward from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's reflected with a forecast of the precipitable water content, uh, the, the moisture content within the atmosphere. And you're just seeing the flow come off of the Gulf of Mexico. And again, you don't see a real tight uh, swirl for, for the entirety of this. We don't have a real well-defined area of low pressure the whole time, but just broad troughing across the region, these little perturbations coming along there. And so that's going to kick off rounds of showers and storms, especially across this region as we head into early next week. We can look at the European model precipitation forecast and kind of time it out, but again, it really is disorganized as we get into next week uh, as we try and you know search for a well-defined area of low pressure and some consistency there. But let's head through the next few days. You know, we've covered the weekend fairly well in depth. We'll be looking for that severe weather risk across this region as we head into the overnight. Well, could really extend a little bit further north. We'll call it this uh, for our severe weather zone Friday afternoon and evening. Those stund uh, thunderstorms could continue across this region along the warm front Saturday night, or Friday night into Saturday morning. Uh, and then as we get into Saturday afternoon, we'll watch a couple of zones for the potential for some strong storms. Again, this Midwest zone, and then along the dry line in the high plains. Uh, we've already covered where that risk is going to be the greatest. Let's take it into Sunday now. Watching for that severe weather risk again across the midsection of the country. A low, disorganized severe weather risk Sunday afternoon and evening. And then let's just head into Monday into Tuesday, into Wednesday, Thursday. We're now into Friday of next week before we see a cold front begin sweeping through the region. That's going to bring an end uh, to the to the moisture plume just being sent northward here and kind of reset things, bringing in a cooler, drier air mass as we head into next weekend. Right around May 29th, May 30th, we'll see uh, that front pushing through the region, at least as it stands right now. But that is a good seven, eight days into the future. And until then, we are just feeding uh, moisture northward from the Gulf of Mexico. And again, not real strong flow. So this is not, you know, a, a worst case scenario. It's not like 2019 where we've got the open, open Gulf uh, and we've just got screaming jet stream winds, screaming southwest flow across the top of that. We've got kind of weak, disorganized southwest flow. Uh, so we end up with something like this over the next three days. Again, scattered precipitation. Just about every state in the Corn Belt going to see at least some, uh, but it is splotchy in nature. We add in the, uh, or we're not adding in, let's look at the next three days. So this is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right here. And this is really reflective of that pattern. Again, broad, weak southwest flow across the region. Let's draw that in black. Uh, and just keeping the plume of moisture coming northward from the Gulf of Mexico such that we end up with this huge zone uh, with the potential for anywhere from, you know, one to three inches of rain in really disorganized, splotchy fashion. Let's put those two days together. Now we've got the next six days. This is, or I'm sorry, the next seven days, taking it all the way uh, to Friday, May 29th. Uh, this is raw from the European ensemble or from the European uh, operational model. And again, where you see the red shading, that's where we're talking about two to three inches of precipitation. You see a broad zone uh, that sees the potential for that. 
When we look at NOAA's forecast, this is the, the National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center's forecast for total precipitation uh, through Friday. Uh, they kind of hone in on this region from the southern plains into the central plains, uh, a little bit more uh, optimistic across this region, keeping things below an inch. But uh, as I show you the ensemble forecast here from the European on the left, we've got the American GFS on the right, we've got good support for an inch or two of precipitation across many areas here in that eastern Corn Belt. Uh, and then if I show you the ensemble forecast here, the probability of an inch or more of precipitation between now and Friday, May 29th, where you see that deep red shading, that is uh, a 90 to 100% shot there. And you see it across Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, eastern Nebraska, much of Iowa, much of Illinois, getting into portions of even Wisconsin and Michigan, seeing that 60 to 70% chance of getting at least an inch of precipitation uh, or more over the next seven days. So. Uh, it's not, you know, screaming southwest flow with a wide open gulf, but it's it's subtle southwest flow with a wide open gulf. Uh, and this is going to be problematic, at least in patchy uh, localized areas, but potentially, you know, bringing some more widespread flooding from the southern plains, the lower mid Mississippi Valley into the, uh, the Missouri Valley and the mid Mississippi Valley. So something we'll have to be watching here as we head through the next several days. And then if we look at the probability of two inches of more, of precipitation, well, we've got 90 to 100% chance here from the Gulf Coast uh, through Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and then into uh, the Ozarks here, parts of Kansas and Missouri. Uh, so again, uh, just really problematic in the central part of the country, but really a whole a big zone here that I'd be on the lookout for some significant precipitation over the next week or so. Let's finish with a look at temperatures. Those do moderate in many areas, 70s and 80s for the high today, 80s for many for the high on Saturday and Sunday. Cooler air starts to kind of work in across the west, 60s and 70s for the highs on Monday and Tuesday with lots of cloud cover expected across the region. Have a great day, a wonderful weekend. We'll talk to you all again on Monday morning. You will be able to find that ag forecast here uh, around five or six o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then we'll resume the Corn Belt on Tuesday. Have a great extended holiday weekend.